I'm going to give you the clinical guidelines for the new dry milling milling chamber and the new Sarek Speedfire Centering Oven. Now we all know zirconia is more forgiving with prep styles, but there are still prep guidelines. The margin needs to be a chamfer margin, but only about half a millimeter, which is not very much. About 0.8 millimeters radially, and then at least one millimeters of occlusal reduction and incisal reduction. Part of the preparation should also be rounded internal line angles. You don't want any sharp angles because uh, that causes propagation of fracture lines underneath the ceramic. So make sure those preparations are nice and rounded. If you're going to be prepping for a bridge, you need to make sure you design the connector size at least nine square millimeters. Nine square millimeters are extremely important to keep the strength of the zirconia at its highest. One thing we've done for all the history of CEREC was we've been using the wrong term. The word milling is actually carbide burrs cutting out a restoration grinding our diamond burrs going through a ceramic. And so what we've been doing actually for all these years is grinding. So when you're setting up the restoration, you have to make sure that you're setting it up as grinding, wet grinding, wet milling, or dry milling. Okay, so we're gonna set up a single restoration. Uh, crown is typically what you're gonna do with the zirconia. Then we set up the design mode, biogeneric individual biocopy, we've all done this. And then when you get down to the materials, you're gonna notice a few words right here. Ceric zirconia milling, ceric zirconia grinding. If you have the new oven and the new milling chamber that has the, the dry milling and the evacuation, you're gonna call it ceric zirconia milling. Then you would set up your milling chamber and then your tooth number. The parameters for ceric zirconia crowns are a little bit different now because of the dry milling nature. One of them is occlusal offset. It now is zero, so it doesn't matter what number you have it set at, minus 200, minus 225, it will then be used at zero. The recommended parameters for ceric zirconia crowns, spacer is 80 microns. Uh, personally, I have found that 80 to 90 works out very well. The next one, occlusal milling offset. Remember, it is set at zero. It doesn't matter what the value is, and this is for the dry milling system. What I have found for the ceric zirconia crowns on the interproximal contact strength, you want a very little hint of green, just barely a little bit of green, and you'll get a really nice contact. The next one, occlusal contact strength, you're gonna set that at minus 50. Minus 50 allows the proposal to be slight in infra-occlusion, and what that allows you to do is build up the occlusion slightly. And the next one, dynamic contact strength, minus 50. The next one, the minimal thickness radial, that's 800 microns. That's not at the margin, but along the axial wall all the way around, 800 microns for that. Then the minimal thickness for the occlusion would, you'd want to set that at a thousand microns or one millimeter. So margin thickness depends on how fast you're going to mill the restoration. If you're going to do it in the fine setting, it should be set at 30 microns. If you're going to do it fast, it has to be at least a hundred microns. It won't allow you to mill in the fast mode unless your margins are set at 100 microns. One of the great features of 441 is the proposals. The proposals are fantastic. You wanna show just a little hint of green. So it, what's nice about having the parameters in slight infra occlusion, you can grow up the anatomy a lot easier than it is to push it down. So an easy tool to do that is the two directional circular shape tool. Just bring that up just to where the green starts to show. But at this point, you're gonna establish a good occlusion. Yellow, I have found, has been too high. So just push that down, just a slight hint of green. On the interproximal contacts, you're going to want to see just the very hint of color. On this contact, this is too tight. So I want to melt this back with the smooth tool just to where you feel like that green is about ready to disappear. Maybe one last little click. What I have found with dry milling zirconia, we can make our contacts just to where they very lightly touch in the software, but in reality, they are just the perfect snap of floss. So you may want to dial back your contacts just a little bit. When you go to the mill preview stage, you have to select the shade. This is important with the sintering process within the oven. 
In the mill preview window, you'll see the dry milled restoration. You also need to select whether it's fine milled or it's a fast mode milled. When you go to start milling, what will happen is you're gonna to have to put in a barcode. The barcode is on the block of zirconia and that helps the speed fire know exactly how much shrink rate that particular lot of zirconia is gonna go through during the sintering cycle. You put the block in the milling chamber and the dry milling process happens. For an average size molar crown, you'll see that it takes probably anywhere from 12 to 15 minutes as it mills. When you take the block out of the milling chamber, you have to be very careful that you don't crack it off of the sprue. This zirconia is like very hard compressed chalk and you don't want to damage it. So be very careful as you take it out of the milling chamber. Do not crack off the crown. There are some people that are showing others to crack it off. I highly suggest not doing that because it will crack into the wall of the restoration and then you have to mill it all over again. First thing you're gonna do is take a very light diamond and just polish right through the sprue. It'll come right off, it falls right off, but make sure when it falls, there's something protected. We use a little placemat so it's not hitting the counter very hard. The, the remainder of the sprue is a little difficult to get off just because the material is so soft. You will never get it as smooth as what the dry milling procedure did. So just do the best you can. After it is sintered, you can polish off any lines or anything that you may see. The next step is simply taking the restoration over to the speed fire oven and placing it in the chamber. Make sure the margins are placed up, not down, and then you just hit start. Sintering a crown may take about 12 to 15 minutes. And when it comes down out of the oven, do not touch this thing. This thing is super hot. In fact, you wanna make sure you do not touch it at all until the timer tells you that you can touch it. But even at this point, you still wanna let it cool down because it is hot enough that it's gonna burn you. After the restoration has cooled off, now comes the fun. Now you can polish it or you can stain it and glaze the restoration. The speed glaze from Serona, it's really easy to use. You just spray it on the restoration until it's a heavy orange. You're gonna put this back into the speed fire oven and run the glaze cycle of it. The glaze cycles of the speed fire oven are fantastic. They only take anywhere from seven to nine minutes and you get a fantastic finish off of it. The greatest thing about the zirconia restorations, if you have good mechanical resistance or retention form, you can traditionally cement these. This is a bridge that we put in that was simply done with Fuji Plus, which is a resin modified glass ionomer. If you're going to adjust your zirconia restorations occlusion or the interproximal contact, Use a light diamond that is less than 40 microns grit and then take the time to polish it extremely well because those little lines, those little uh, adjustment marks are potential fracture lines later for the restoration. The Speedfire oven from Serona is zirconia, simply fastened.